Hello, welcome. This is Jeff from Finally Learn, where we're today we're working on purchasing inventory. What are the journal entries? So we're in the middle of our financial accounting chapters. Here are all our chapters. We're working on chapter four right now. And so I already have a video on the accounting for merchandising activities, but now we're working on just doing more journal entries with the purchases side. And the next video will be, what if we have sales of inventory? Now we have articles, videos, playlists, so check in the description below. And so let's get started talking about purchases. Now, if we want to think about our total purchases, we have purchases. Anytime you buy inventory, could be you pay cash or it's on account. And then you could have purchases discounts. Now, remember there's a cash discount. You could have credit terms of 210 net 30, 2% 2 discount if you pay within 10 days or the total is due in 30. There are other um, discount terms or, or credit terms. That's a real common one. That's one we're going to use in our example today. Then you have purchases, returns, and allowances. Now you understand if we return items, then our cost of inventory goes down. But allowances is a similar thing. You call and say, hey, the color is not right. I'm a little disappointed. I'm going to return them. And they'll say, no, don't. Would you be happy if we reduce the price? And so we'll give you 100%, $100 discount or whatever. And so you say, yes, so that's an allowance. And so that reduces the cost of our inventory, but we didn't return the items. Now, the last one is transportation in. If we have to pay, and we are the buyer, if we have to pay for shipping cost, then that increases the cost of our inventory. And so that is transportation in, and that is the total purchase. We have purchases minus the discounts, minus the returns, plus the transportation in, and there's their total cost of inventory. If you want to think of it this way, you can look at the inventory account. You have beginning inventory plus purchases plus transportation in minus the discounts, the returns. And then anytime we sell, it goes from the inventory account to cost of goods sold. So inventory is an asset. Cost of goods sold is the expense. Now, remember, we have two inventory systems, periodic. We calculate cost of sales or cost of goods sold at the end of the period and perpetual. We're going to use that today. It's cost of goods sold or cost of sales when it's sold. Every transaction, we would make an entry to cost of goods sold if we sell any inventory. Now, credit terms, here's a couple of different credit terms. We're going to use 210 net 30. And then shipping terms, we're going to use FOB shipping point where the buyer pays for shipping cost. There's no entry for the buyer if, if it's FOB destination because the seller pays the shipping cost and our combined cost would be the cost of whatever the seller charges us. So there's not a separate shipping cost. All right, so let's work a problem. All right, let's assume we have a company and on June 1st, we purchased 1,200 units of inventory for $15 each from Alpha Company and its FOB shipping point and the credit terms are 210 net 30. Now, did we pay cash? Well, we know we didn't because we have uh, credit terms. If we paid cash, then we would say we paid cash and there'd be no credit terms. So we're going to debit inventory and we're going to credit accounts payable. Well, how much? Well, Inventory is an asset that goes up, and so it's going to be 1,200 units times the 15. And I've already formatted for commas here. So it's $18,000 is our inventory. How much do we owe? Well, we owe $18,000. And so our entry, if we buy inventory, it's going to be debit inventory, credit accounts payable. So our inventory here is going to be $18,000. We can do a balance here. We don't need that balance yet. All right, well, let's say that on June the 2nd, we paid $600 to the shipping company to deliver our goods. Remember, it's FOB shipping point, so the buyer has to pay for shipping cost. So we're going to debit inventory and credit cash, and the amount is for $600. So if we look at our inventory, we already have $18,000. And we're going to add to that 600. So our inventory now has a balance of 18,000 plus 600. 
So 18,600 is the balance of our inventory account. This is perpetual inventory. We always keep up with the balance of inventory and pretty much every entry would affect inventory. All right, let's say that we have, on the six, we found out 100 items were damaged, and so we returned 100 units. And so what we have is, remember we haven't paid cash yet for those items, so we're gonna debit accounts payable and credit inventory. I'm gonna indent, see inventory, and how much are those items? Well, they're 100 items that cost us $15 each. So we're going to take 100 times 15, so that's 1,500. And then 1,500 is the inventory. So here's what we have. We have our inventory right now is 18,600. But we reduce it by 1,500 with a credit, right? And so... Our inventory now is 18,000 plus the 600 minus the 1,500. So what is the balance of our inventory now? Well, it's 17,100. This is the perpetual inventory system. We're always updating the balance of inventory. Anytime we buy, anytime we sell. All right, so let's do the, the on the 10th. Let's say that they paid the amount due to the alpha company. Well, how much do they owe? They originally owed 18,000, but they returned 1,500. So we only owe 18,000 minus 1,500. So what are we going to do? We're going to say accounts payable. Now, a lot of times we can abbreviate accounts payable, AP. Once you get involved uh, more and more in accounting, everybody would say AP. So you could just abbreviate it that way. I'm not going to abbreviate it right now because I want you to think about the payable versus the receivable and so on. So how much do we have to pay off? Well, we're going to pay off 18,000 minus 1,500. And so that's 16,500. Now, that's how much we paid and we're going to pay cash of how much? Well, we need to think about, did we take advantage of the discount? So on the first, we had 210 net 30. 210 net 30. So we got a 2% discount. So our inventory, we're going to reduce our inventory by the amount of the discount. So we owe 16,500 times 2%. We get a 2% discount. Now, if this were you and going to the store and they say, we're going to give you a 10% discount, we're really good about figuring out how much people owe us or how much discount it might be. So here, that's the 2% discount. And so we're only going to pay 16500 minus the discount, which is 330 So we're only going to have to pay 16170 So let's look at our inventory now. We know we have 18000 and the 600 We know we have those debits. We have a credit. Uh, 1500 we know that for sure. We now have credited 330 So what we have, we have an inventory balance of 18000 plus the 600 minus the 1500 minus the 330 So our inventory balance is 16770 Now, what about, what are our net purchases? We should be able to figure out this easily. So our purchases were how much? Well, uh, we can go to the very top. Let me just kind of use this and we'll point to it. The inventory purchases were 18,000. Our discounts were the 330. Our returns were the 1500. Our uh, transportation costs, our transportation in that we had to pay, I think was 600. And I'm going to make uh, the discounts, I'll make it negative, just so I can add it up easily, and make the uh, returns negative. So then I can just add this up 
And what is our total purchases? Well, our total purchases, 16,770. We know that already. We kept up with the balance of inventory. So what are our net purchases? 16,770. What is the cost per unit? Well, how many units do we have? We had 1,200. We returned 100, so we had 1,100 units, 1,100. So if we take the 16,770 divided by the 1,100, we end up with a cost per unit of something around, probably not exactly 1525, something around $15.24 and a half cents. Hang on to extra decimal places and that way you know it's not exactly 1525. All right, the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to make a sale. Let's say we sold 800 units. We sold 800 units and let's bring the inventory, uh, all this that we know. We sold 800 units. So we need to make two entries. The credit terms are 210 net 30. So our two entries are going to be for cost of sales, or you call this cost of goods sold. And how much is the cost of those 800 items? Well, 800 times the 15, 20, four and a half cents. So about the $15 and 25 cent amount. So that's going to be 12,196. If it comes out to be pennies, I'm not going to worry about the pennies. Let's just do it in whole dollars. So we debit cost of sales and we're going to credit the inventory account. Debit cost of sales, credit inventory for 12196 but We need to make an entry for the sale. And so it's going to be accounts receivable. We can do it AR, but I want to type it out. Accounts receivable and sales. How much? Well, 800 times $26 each. We're going to sell for 20800 Now let's look at our inventory. We're, we are um, going to have a reduction in inventory in the amount of 12196 So what is the balance of inventory after this? I'm going to do the sum of the debits minus the sum of all the credits. So our inventory looks like it has a balance of 4,574. We purchased 18,000 and all the other things that went on and we sold 12,000. And so the balance of in inventory is 4,574. So one more thing here, what is our gross margin? Our gross margin is going to be net sales or our gross profit. You can call it gross profit. Our net sales is 20,800. Our cost of sales, is 12,196. So our gross profit is 20,000 minus the 12,000. It's going to be, we've made 8,600. All our inventory transactions, we have sold 20,800 and our cost of our sales, cost of goods sold is 12,196. So we made a profit, a gross profit of 8,600. From then we would do the other things on the income statement and hopefully have a net income or a net profit. Hey, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Good luck in financial accounting.